And welcome everybody to episode 14 of Comic Confidential, the weekly podcast where we bring you the week's comic-related news, views, and reviews. I'm your host, Troy, and with me as always, the world's mightiest mortal, Cade. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, good. What a week of celebrations this week. Holy, isn't it? it? Isn't it? First off, we've done three episodes, so congratulations to us. Yeah, that's a record. For starters, that's got to be close to a record. Yeah, who needs sleep? (laughs) Exactly, right? (laughs) We also had uh, May the 4th. Happy May the 4th, International Star Wars Day. Yes, we did. We also had Free Comic Book Day. Oh, Free Comic Book Day for everybody except me. Yeah. Because I couldn't get to any comic book store anywhere on the planet on Free Comic Book Day. <laughs> What's wrong on with On either you, time zones. <laughs> Just couldn't make it. <laughs> uh, and of course, we are currently, as we release this episode, celebrating Mother's Day. Yes, we are. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you for everything you do. Yes. It's amazing. We wouldn't be here without you. That is very true. (laughs) Uh, And speaking of thanks, uh, why not thank everybody that listens, subscribes, reviews, does whatever it is that they do to uh, to be a part of the show. Yeah. We appreciate you heaps. Absolutely. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook at Comic Confidential Podcast, Instagram and Twitter at Comic Con Pod. Pretty soon, we'll probably also have a YouTube channel, which is super exciting. Yeah, we just got to get... Dennis in the gear. That's his job. Come on, Dennis. And remember what happened last time we had Dennis in here? Oh, I remember. Fuck shit up. I remember it well. (laughs) Uh, Fuck you. I mean, thank you, Dennis. Um, (laughs) And don't forget, there is also the website, comicconpod.com. It's amazing. It is. It's good. It is. It's all right. Oh, you know, I'd give it a C. A C plus? C minus, I was going to say. Oh, that's okay. Fuck you. (laughs) All right, let's talk about some news, man. Yeah, man. Uh, did you hear the Russo, Russo brothers yeah. accidentally might have confirmed Captain Marvel for Infinity War? Yes, they did. Man. Well, well, sort of did. They kind of like dropped it and then they kind of tried to play it off a bit. But um, I think they've basically just, they're going to have to go with it. They're going to have to say, yeah, we did it. Okay, yeah, let, yeah. Let's, it's, it's happening. <laughs> if it's not Captain Marvel, it will at least be Carol Danvers and that might lead into the Captain Marvel yeah. movie. Yeah, that's right. Um. But that's pretty exciting. But nothing has been named for that movie yet at all. No, when's it, actually, when does that get released? Uh, 2018. 2018. Or 2019. 2018 to 19. Yeah. Sometime you, within that year span. How long do you think they'll need to like let a, a character know to get jacked enough for that movie? A I year? don't know. Two years? I'm not even sure who the front runner is. Yeah. I know that I, like one of the bigger fan picks is um, Shalise Theron. Oh, really? Yeah, whether that'd actually be a thing or not, I don't know. That's actually not a bad pick. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, We'll see what they do. Um, But Infinity War, um, which does come out in 2018. I think so. Yeah, definitely 2018. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we'll see what happens then, I guess. Mm. But um, that's a very, very big name dropping mistake from them. Man, Marvel do this quite a bit lately. They do. Get your shit together, (laughs) Marvel. Um, Adam McKay, who was um, one of the writers of Ant-Man, uh, one of the directors of Step Brothers and Anchorman, right? So all those, think of that as the comedy trio is that, that you will, uh, is set to direct a live action version of Boom Comics Irredeemable by Mark Wade. Um, I've read it. It's not overly funny. So I don't know how this is. Gonna, I don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, Adam McKay is a very like he's a good director and a very good writer. Uh, but Irredeemable is basically the story of a, of a superhero called the Plutonian, um, a character with very much Superman like powers, who essentially turns evil, turns against the world, uh, and wreaks havoc upon it. And it's up to his former teammates to stop him. Uh, and they are well and truly outmatched in the power department. So it actually makes for quite a great um, constant sort of battle between them all. Really? Yeah, it's really good. I'm not going to lie. I have never heard of this. Yeah. Check it out. Everybody, check it out if you get a chance. I'm not. It's a great fucking comic. Uh, (laughs) Just not. Just not going to do it. Nah. I I don't have the time. I'll wait for the movie. Ain't nobody got time for that. I read the book when the movie's coming out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, There is nothing else about it, you know, named, like as far as actors or anything like that goes. Yeah. Um, But the fact that they are actually going to create it is, is pretty exciting for me. And I'm sure all the other irredeemable fans out there. All four, all four of you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we've hey, got a little group. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Kevin Feige says Marvel are committed to making a Black Widow movie. Is that how you pronounce his name? Feige? 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 No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yes. Anyway. Yeah, Kevin Feige. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That guy. But um, <laughs> don't expect to see it <laughs> anytime before 2020. Yeah. Who wants to see this? Not me. Everybody. Nah. No, seriously. Um, it, it is still the number one. When, when fans are asked for which character from the Avengers they would like to see in a solo movie that hasn't already had a solo movie, Black Widow is, is far and above at the top. Okay, um, uh, fans don't think she's had the treatment that she deserves, like that the character deser- deserves within yeah. the movies. Um, and, you know, what? what's not to like about um, Scarlett Johansson's portrayal of Black Widow? Why wouldn't you want to see her in a standalone movie? I don't know, man. I just don't think... I don't think the character has the chops to support herself in a movie. She's always a supporting character. But that's what they've made her. Yeah. That's the problem. Mm. They've made her basically everybody's love interest throughout the whole thing uh, with little brief glimpses of what she's capable of. Yeah. Um, no, no, I, I think it's a good there. move. My, my only issue is it's not going to fit within phase three. So then what happens? Yeah, it's we unnecessary. We wait until 2020 or we wait until 2021 or something like that and we still... You, What's like, it hope, offer? Well, yeah. I, yeah. Like, yeah. Are, are we still caring about it at that point? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's, and that's what's my... Scarlett Johansson doing at that time? Well, who knows? She'll probably be about 50 years old by then. Yeah, mm. by the time it comes out. Um, grandpa, Grandma Black Widow, mm. maybe. We'll see that I think that's a thing, actually. Yes. Is it? Yeah, I think so. I just say yes sometimes. Like, it's yes. Yes, you're right. And it's like, hang on a second. Is he talking shit? <laughs> that's not me. All right. Um, Alden Ehrenreich. And look, we don't normally do a lot of Star Wars news. We do. We, we like Star Wars. We love it. Uh, but this is pretty big news. Alden Ehrenreich, from probably nothing you've seen before, um, literally, like, I had a look through his IMDb list. Mm, nothing. No? L- see, definitely... Maybe one. Okay. What's that movie that just came out? It's got George Clooney in it. Uh, Not the Nespresso ad. <laughs> no, that's Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. But he has basically been cast as the young Han Solo for the upcoming Han Solo anthology, booked for 2018. I think they're just in contract negotiations or whatever, but they want him. He basically just has to sign on the dotted line and it's done. Uh, The movie's going to focus on Han Solo's days before joining the Rebel Alliance, which will be pretty cool. Um, And he's beaten out uh, people like Taron Egerton and Jack Rayner. Good. Uh, Yeah. Piss off. Piss off, Jack and Taron. Yeah, you're more like jackass. Am I right? Taron it up. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lad. Hey. Uh, (laughs) But I think, um, look, having a look at the guy, um, I think he looks good. I think it's going to be good. Um, and the character is so iconic that, you know, why not bring him back? Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, is this probably maybe the biggest news slash rumor of the week? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, just because it's our last bit. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's, well, Supergirl has not been picked up for a second season yet. And there's rumors that CW could be picking it up from CBS, probably due to the fact that it costs $3 million a fucking episode. Obviously, none of that budget was spent in the writer's room. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No. Um, Okay, first of all, it's not the biggest news of the week, but it is interesting. Um, It's kind of hard to like... I haven't really been able to judge how people basically found this show i guess yeah like how, how they like it i mean I, you know it's it kind of seems to have divided people down the middle you've got the people that just love it it's like oh my god it's so amazing it's so different to everything that we've normally seen and then your other people that are just like it is a shit heap you know it, like we've said it a thousand times it yeah. had a handful of good episodes yeah and it was such a wasted concept do you think the cw treatment though could could help it yeah i think so yeah yeah e- yeah yeah definitely it could only benefit from it for sure um cbs probably wasn't the right station for it to be on in the first place no um just as a as an interesting side note though when you're talking about three million dollars per episode to produce that's roughly about the same it's comparable to a to a daredevil episode yeah so that's the quality you can get with three million dollars <laughs> And you're not getting that. You're not getting that. Yeah. Um, so spend your money more wisely. Maybe CW, like they, they obviously have, from what I've read, they have a little bit of a smaller budget when it comes to Flash and Arrow. Yeah, around 1.5 about- to 2 million, yeah. something like that. Um, but they're not exact numbers, by the way. Um, but yeah, you know, it's so they'll probably drop the budget back a little bit, maybe tweak the acting, not the acting, but the, the, the writing, the character-driven storyline. 
Uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, hopefully she just comes over as Power Girl. Yeah, well, let's just do that. Yeah. Why not? Mm. All right, and that's the news for the week. That's the news. And that's going to bring us to the weekly wrap, the segment where we wrap up all the week's TV action, starting off this week with Fear the Walking Dead, Blood in the Streets. So the Abigail crew finally feel the impacts from Alicia's previous radio theme stupidity. Nick makes out for the mainland and we get to see a little bit of a Strand backstory. Yeah, Strand, not so much as a badass as we thought. Yeah. You know, his backstory was a little bit underwhelming. He's a con man turned real estate developer. Yes. Here I was hoping that he'd be some sort of, you know, government operative, some sort of like, you know, super badass spy type something. That was going to, I don't know, have some really interesting backstory that was going to mean he would like eventually be yeah, like, I don't know, the Rick of the show or something or whatever. But yeah, no. No. He's not the modern modern day James Bond. He isn't. <laughs> he's not Idris Elba. No. He, Hashtag Idris Elba for James Bond. He is just a man who likes to steal your credit cards. Yeah. Mr. Steal Your Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And he's not Mr. Steal Your Girl, as we found out. He's not. He could be Mr. Steal Your Guy. Yes. Um, however, I don't know necessarily that, that the character is, is gay. Doesn't matter either way if it is. But I think, you know, is it more maybe out of necessity, you know, in order for him to keep the lifestyle that he now has, that he is playing into um, uh, Thomas Abigail, was it? Is that his name? Thomas Abigail, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, into, um, into, you know. Playing into his thing, whatever into it is. his his fantasy or yeah, yeah yeah that's actually that's an interesting point. I never thought of it that way because Thank I thought you. you know this is a it's not that interesting of a backstory to show us that you know he's gay. Yeah, it's not going to build upon him. Yeah, I think it's um it's it's kind of yeah. Well, I mean it, it's been proven obviously that he's a con man. Um, so why not continue the con like that? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Well, if that's the case, you know that's going to be amazing. To, well, the, to the story. Well, we'll see because, that. you know, they seem to be on their way uh, to meeting up with Thomas Abigail. Um, I, I think we found a interesting new character with Louise. Yeah. And um, this was the guy that he was going to go meet. Yeah. So this is the whole reason why, you know, as as the story opens, this is the reason why Nick is, you know, risking everything to, to basically hit the mainland yeah, and that's cover it. himself in zombie shit. <laughs> and I must have missed something. In the first two minutes of this episode, yeah, because I had no idea why he was up on the up in the ocean swimming. No, there was nothing. That's, yeah, that's how it started. Yeah, okay, good. Swimming. I didn't miss anything. He was just swimming. Uh, yeah, swimming naked. Yeah, <laughs> it was, was kind of out of context. Yeah, I, a little I didn't bit. Know why it was happening until until it? You know, obviously, as the story developed, we saw what he was. Yeah. what was happening. Um, but yeah, I, I think this Louise character is probably going to be the guy that I wanted Strand to be. Yeah. And you kind of see that a little bit later in the episode. Yeah, he's very charismatic. Very charismatic, a little bit of a badass. Yeah, you know, he's got that cheekiness to him. Yeah, drives a nice sports car. Just driving around in his Porsche while the zombies are falling off the little sandbanks. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I liked him. So we'll see how that develops. Uh, We'll see how the whole Thomas Abigail plot develops. Yeah. Um, The the side plot of um, Connor and Jack and this gang of water-based bad guys um, could be interesting. I'd like to see where it leads. Um, look, in all honesty, I'm still not convinced that people would turn this bad, this organized, this quickly. You know who they need out there? Who? The water rats. The water rats. You remember that show? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they'll sort out these fucking water outlaws. <laughs> Sydney-based water cops. Yeah, no one outside of Australia will have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, but it was a fantastic show about, yeah, water cops. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's exactly what we need. Um, uh, Connor and Jack. Yeah? Yeah. Man, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, not really, like, overly, um, uh, you know, uh, terrifying, were they? <laughs> they were, if, you know, if they didn't have the guns, who are they? They're just, like, a couple of geeks. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, look, I th- there was there was one thing, and this is going to, I'm... I'm so early in the show, I'm bringing in my dick move of the week. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, straight up. Oh, like, oh, what are we like, hang five on. minutes in? Yeah. Oh, 14. <laughs> 14 <laughs> minutes in. Uh, I need some theme music for this. Look, my dick move of the week goes to Alicia. Oh, thank fucker. Right? Because, all right, 
Okay, so she is the one who created this this whole thing in the first place by stupidly talking on the radio and letting this Chris or Jack character, sorry, whatever his name is, know everything about them and all that sort of stuff. So naturally, they come later and they're trying to like steal the boat and all that sort of stuff. What does Alicia say when she is being taken away by Jack to her mother? Ugh. I started this. I can make it better. I trust him. I trust this guy who. <laughs> It's holding us gun at gunpoint. I trust him. Alicia is well and truly now threatening Chris for the title of most annoying character, let me tell She's you. She's a fucking idiot. Um, I hope that that's all a ploy to, you know, to make Jack relax, as it were. Um, but I don't think it is. I think mm. she's just an idiot. Uh, congratulations, Alicia from Fear the Walking Dead. You get my dick move of the week. Um, <laughs> yeah, look... <laughs> You know, I, I get the fact that, you know, they 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 could be pretty close to land. Mm. You know, are, are they, they're probably riding the shoreline. Yeah, you, you'd know, say so. Probably staying over the horizon, so, you know, not to arouse, us, you know, suspicion. Yeah. But how many fucking random groups of people can they run into? Yeah, like stranded people that yeah. are, you know, either, you know, I don't know, having trouble there on a boat or they're in a raft or this is happening or th- that's happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's getting crazy. I think, it, and they've got to be careful with this because it's not going to be too long before this gets a little bit ridiculous. It's um, it's their version of Freak of the Week. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know? Yeah, basically. Um, hopefully, though, with the way the story's headed. So we've gotten glimpses of what's happening in the next episode. Yeah. So we're going to... We're going to go to mainland again, which is good. I think we need to stay there. It's time to get off the boat. Yeah. You know, there's no need to be on it anymore. I mean, let's, let's, get to, let's get to Mexico or wherever we're going Hopefully to. Hopefully just something happens to this boat so they're forced to leave it. Yeah. I think it's time to get on land. Um, again, once again, the characters aren't developed enough for them to, uh, to stay out there. Um, however, it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. Um, I'm going to give the best scene of the week, though. Okay. Um, That's new. This is new. Oh, by the way. So you get dick move. You get dick move and and you get best scene. Oh, wow. You don't get dick move every episode, but you will get best scene. Yeah. I just make shit up as I go along. I like it. All right. Best scene of the week for me from this show, not from the week, but just from this show in particular, a bloodied up Nick showing his street ball moves. In the gated community. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. Yeah, it was very brief, but I yeah. just thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. No, I like anyway, it. Anyway, and one, a little bit of and one. Well, my, mine was them driving around in the in the Porsche. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just That's like, also cool. Like it and a thing. Yeah. Uh, what do you rate it? <sighs> I'm going to give it a solid two and a half out of five. It's a solid two and a half. Yeah. So that's basically dead down the middle. It'd it's, be not like sh- a, it's not shit. It's not good. Not shit. Not good. It'd be like a C. A yeah. C rating if you're at school. Yeah. Is that a thing? C? Uh, anyway, when it finished, and this is this is the honest truth, when it finished, my, my girlfriend looked at me and she basically said, did anything just happen in that episode? Because it, you know, it didn't no, really did it. No. And that seems to be the theme for the show so far. You kind of get to the end and it cuts off and you're like, well... Cool. What just happened? Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'll agree with you. Yeah. Two and a half. Okay. It's just a nothing. It's just a nothing. It's Point, a bit of a... Pointless, I guess, enemies. Yeah. You know, pointless story. I want this show to be good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I um, guess the, the only good thing that was in this episode is that we got to see Strand is a little bitch. Yeah. Well, yes, that that is true. He just bailed yeah. straight away. So um, that's that's it. Also, actually, now that you now that you bring that up, when he's just floating in the water at the end of it, and he's like so close to the boat, do they go searching for him? Yes. Okay, because it just looked like he was floating like fifty meters away from the boat the he whole was. time. Yeah, he was the whole time. I know it's fucking stupid. All right, uh, <laughs> Fear the Walking Dead returns next week with Captive. Yes, that takes us to Gotham, Azrael. It does. And Azrael is unleashed upon Gotham. Jim Gordon closes in on Hugo Strange. And Barbara is, is crazy again. Is she? Why? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, look, I honestly can't keep up. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I honestly don't. Man, I, I, they, they probably are in <laughs> cahoots. Their, their writer's room must be right next door to fucking DC's Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> 
uh, Arrow. Yeah. And a few of the writers from The Flash are sneaking in there too. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, they're all, they've all got their one little conference room that yeah. they <laughs> bump off ideas off each other and all that sort of stuff. It's very crazy. Uh, look, but this, this episode, I guess it pretty much gave Azrael the treatment I thought they would. It was very Gothamized. Um, yeah. but I still hold hope because this episode was actually pretty fun. Um, uh, you know, the fact that Jim Gordon kind of beat him so easily is a little bit of a worry initially. I yeah. know he'll come back. But- yeah, no, I, I agree with you. You know, but, you know, Azrael still has the potential to be a pretty great villain. Yeah. And the one good thing, and I can't believe I'm fucking saying this, mm-hmm. is that Bruce Wayne was kind of watching him in awe. You know, is this him thinking about his future? Yeah, like kind of a foreshadowing of like what he wants to become. Yeah, he's just looking at, oh, wow. Potentially. I did read something um, on the internet. Oh, yeah. I'll make reference to the internet every week. <laughs> I did read something on the internet in, in regards to um, Gotham really sort of seems to be wanting this Batman character. Like, they can't have it. So they're doing everything they can to, to, try, get- to, to try to create one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how that's going to work for them. I don't know if that's going to play out fairly well. Um, you know, we know that we're never going to see Batman in this show. Uh, but, you know, Azrael, okay, a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, and and it's really the closest we're going to get. Yeah. Unless we see, oh, probably they can't even do like a their version of a Nightwing who becomes, who comes before Batman. You know? Well, that would be fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying here? Yeah, I don't know. You watch. You'll, you, you, you'll be you'll be writing for Gotham soon. Yeah, if you fantastic. keep talking like that. Uh, one thing I did like though, um, B D Wong, Mister Hugo Strange, was at his Law and Order best tonight. Um, it was great to see the character progress. Um, the only thing I, I, you know, I I do want to point out, and this is very like this is nitpicking, but I could see the dude's chin beard glue. On his face, clear as day, when they were doing close-ups of him, and for me, that sort of, that type of stuff is unforgivable. Who is like proof watching this show? Yeah, you know what? I, every time I see him on there, it's like that. I look at that and that I think that is the worst fucking stick-on beard I've ever seen. Yeah, every mean, time. Meanwhile, like BD Wong's at home, like, oh my god, I've been growing this for months. <laughs> this is the best wankers. I can do. It's just a skin condition. <laughs> um, sorry, BD Wong, if you're listening. Yeah. Um, I love your beard, even though it's fake as shit. And um, the Riddler as well, actually. Yeah, the Riddler had, had a pretty good episode. Yeah, yeah, he's on to Strange here, and um, it's cool how he's kind of figuring this place out. Yeah, he's kind of like they've. Uh, I reckon they've injected new life into the character. Yeah, um, new life and new purpose. Yes, um, yes, I agree. Which is good because I kind of think they kind of rushed him off a little bit, and I was worried that that was it. And we weren't going to see any more of him. Yeah. Or, or not not much of him. But it looks like he's actually going to continue to play a bigger part, uh, which is interesting. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see what characters we get out of his discovery of um, Hugo Strange's little laboratory. Yeah. Um, we'll probably get, you know, we're bound to get a clay face. We know that's coming. Whether that comes from there, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we may see Jerome back as Hope, well. Hopefully. Fish Mooney. We know, oh. we know he's got him down there. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, I guess one thing that um, that was a little bit annoying, though, is the fact that they kind of, you know, what was the point of having Penguin? And do you know, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it yeah. wasn't, what was like, that? The Penguin storyline in Arkham? Is that uh, what you're saying? No. Well, yes, but I've, I've said that before. So the whole Penguin storyline in Arkham was was ridiculous. Yeah. It's kind of like he's evil. Let's make him good. You know, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. But in this, in particular. He's kind of just, he's in it. But I think he's just in it for them to put him in it. There is no, oh, no yeah. need for him to be there. Yeah. Um, and I think Gotham kind of tries to do that. They kind of like try to like, what's the word I'm looking for? Jam, I guess, for lack of a better word, all their characters into into each episode. Well, yeah, well, and, and this goes back to the point that you made a little bit earlier. You know, they can't use Batman, so let's use everyone else that we can. Yeah. Why? Don't do it. Yeah. Concentrate on a few key characters, yeah, and build their stories. This is Gotham, not yeah. fucking not Batman. Batman, it's not Batman Origins. Yeah, um, do like they're doing with the Riddler. I yeah. think that's good. You know, hopefully that this plays out well, but we'll see what happens. You know what I don't like what? is this whole Barbara Gordon shit. Yeah, what is what? What is happening? <laughs> like, it's, 
She was sane the last time we saw her. Well saw her. and truly sane. Yes. Or appeared to be, at, at the very least. Now it's just like a flick of a switch. She she's, and I'm um, like, you know. Flicking a switch. Flicking a switch, literally. Yeah. You know, she's lost her mind again. She is batshit crazy. Yes. Uh, and I don't understand why. Yeah, I oh, don't know, man. We'll Drop, see what they do with it. They've got to just get rid of the character. Well, they can't. Well, it, they can. It's an integral character oh, well. in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> they're, they're making her terrible. Yeah, they are. And they, every show that you watch, there's always one character on the show that you wish wasn't there. Whether it's Arrow and <laughs> Laurel, whether yeah, it's yeah. this and Barbara. You could go to every single show, like Fear the Walking Dead and all of them. Yeah, that's right. You, you could go to any show. And pick it, but Barbara is this. I don't know what they're doing. Um, I bring Fish Mooney back and get rid of Barbara. I'd Ooh, say no. Nah, that's taking it too far. Too far. You're a dickhead. Sorry, man. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on. What do you rate it? Uh, so I will rate it um, a three out of five. I'll give it three out of five. Little slaps from Nigwa's Nig- Nigwa Nig- Nigma's little uh, leather fly swatter. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. What about you? Uh, I'm going to give it two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah, yeah. Not not Pretty a great. run of the mill. Yeah. Just that's my that's my generic episode there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I will uh, I will give it best scene though. Best scene for me oh, yeah? um would be the Riddler proving that he's smarter than everyone else when talking to Hugo Strange. Yes. Actually he figures out his uh patience better than he does. Yeah, exactly. So awesome. Uh Gotham returns next week with Unleashed. It does. Yeah. And that's gonna take us to Agents of Shield failed experiments. So Hive plans to turn the world inhuman. Daisy and Mac go at it, and the Kree stop by Earth for a friendly visit. Don't they? A short one. A short one. Very short. Uh, look, I'll say it again, but I'll say it for the last time. I am sorry to everyone and um, you know, for, for not doing this show for as long as we did. Uh, I am glad we're back. This was another solid episode. Uh, episode? Episode. A solid episode. Another solid episode, um, you know, showing Daisy seemingly... Her genuine acceptance of of who she is and and what she's doing. It's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. (laughs) Don't agree with me or anything. Well, no, no. And I I feel you because, you know, uh, Mac with Daisy, you've got to feel bad for the dude because he just wants his fucking friend back. And she's just fucking him up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But that's that's kind of that's kind of it. That's kind of where she proved that. You know, there's no coming back for her. Well, that's right. There but, will be. Yeah, there there will be because <laughs> she's obviously infected by the the um the hive parasite. Yeah. yeah. So she'll come back. But it, you know, it'd be interesting be, to see how much of this stays with them because they obviously have elements of their own persona still. Well, she basically told Mac, you know, on numerous occasions, I am fine. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. You know. This is it for me. And mm. she, when she was talking to Hive um, earlier in the episode, I believe, she was also basically saying that she had, you know, she, she still wanted to save her friends, but she wanted to save them by bringing them into, to, you know, this inhuman world. So she still well and truly yeah. has her own memories and thoughts and all that sort of stuff. It, and, you know, it's, maybe it's, she just loves it. Well, she that's just, it. I just love it. <laughs> and, you know, that's quite interesting. You know, it, sh- it shows that, uh, you know, they want to turn everyone into inhumans. Yeah. But it's not necessarily for evil purposes. Yeah, like it's. it's it, it, is it like it's, it's not yeah, really? Is it? I guess to a normal human, it probably would be. Yeah, like if you know, just every everyday Joe, you know. Yeah, that's just going to work, doing his thing. Is kind of like, well, I don't want to be an inhuman. Yeah, I don't want to turn into that fucking thorny thing. looking creature. Yeah, I don't want to have to like go and sit through surgery and you know (laughs) have my face melt off and all that sort of stuff yeah that's it uh but basically that's what hive's plan is it's to turn the entire world inhuman yes sign me up give me some powers yeah i'll take it you're brave but then what's the point of having powers if everyone's got powers well yeah exactly right actually oh my god (laughs) my mind is blown if you could fly and everyone could fly they'll still be cool yeah wouldn't it yeah yeah uh, the Kree Reavers. You know, yes. I thought they were going to be pretty fucking badass. I mean, they're Krees. They're Krees. Yeah. They looked pretty badass. They did. They looked like fucking monsters. But they were just meh and kind of get dispatched in a couple of punches, really. Yeah, in a hot minute. Yeah. Um, just gone. But Alicia, the inhuman who can multiply, yeah. she's gone, surely. She dead? 
She got to be dead. She did. She did. Uh, well, how many can she multiply? This is one thing I don't know. Can she? Can, does she have an intimate, an intimate, and like an infinite number of multiplications? You know, or who duplications. Would be the best person to ask. Who? Exhibit. Really? Yes. Because of multiply, the song that he yes. did. No, yes. It's, it's like we're friends, man, and I know exactly where you're going because <laughs> no one else would have gotten that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so she's dead. She did. Yeah, let's has move to be. on. She did. Uh, one thing that I did like, uh, which I thought was pretty cool, um, the Civil War references. Oh yeah, the uh, all four, four four words of it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, man, it, it doesn't matter. You know, if you if you suck with this show all the way through all the all the seasons, man, this is all you get when these shows like try to reference the movies. Yeah, that's it, man. Come on. What are you are you saying? All you get is like quotations and yeah. that's it yeah and that's all they reference yeah. but still it's pretty cool um so if you guys missed it i don't know how you would uh i think it was hive was basically saying or you know his name is hive is that what we're calling him it's actually hive it is hive mr hive yes mr hive uh, yeah mr hive um only billionaires can make iron suits and only the government can make super soldiers which only leads to more war oh uh. my god civil war in cinemas now Go see it. <laughs> listen, and listen to our review. Oh, yeah. That's probably a better point. Yeah. <laughs> listen to our Civil War review. It's almost as good as the movie. Yeah. Which I gave, like, I think a 1,000 out of 100. Something like that. Yeah. You know, you're the only person in the world who did that. You, Whatever, mate. You bloody dickhead. Whatever, mate. Uh, look, not much Fitzsimmons action this week. Nah. That was a bit disappointing. Eh. I don't care. Yeah. I yeah. suppose. But whatever. moving on. All right. <laughs> uh, do you have a best scene for this one? I've got a best scene. Uh, I'm going to let you do it because I have no notes for oh. this. <laughs> well, you can't just think. Can't well, think for yourself. Okay, I can. You need your little iPad. I don't have. I haven't got it. I'm using my little iPhone. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I'm going to say it's when Hive melts off the Kree's face, and you like you see his, his skull and all that shit. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, kind of a la. What's his name? Arnold Tot from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yes, yes. Do you actually know what I'm talking about? Yes, or are I you do. just like trying no, to pretend? No, dickhead, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was, that was such a, a frigging great scene from that movie. Yes. So why not give it best scene? I'll agree with you. Best scene of the week. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I'm going to rate this 4.25 out of 5 mils of Cree spinal fluid. Oh. Yeah. Holy sh- Is that the highest rating you've ever done? No, I think I've given something a 4.5. Ooh. Just relax, mate. I'm going to go back and listen. But right. yeah, no, I'm going to give it um four. Four? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, possibly the episode of the week. Yeah. Uh, I would say so. I can't wait for the, for next week, basically. Yeah, mate. I tell you, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the best show on TV at the moment. Currently. Yeah. What was I thinking? Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. returns next week with Emancipation. And that's going to bring us to The Flash. Rupture. Yes. Zoom makes his way back to Central City. Cisco meets his brother from an Earth 2 mother rupture. And Barry Allen goes full on Flashpoint. Doesn't he what? But it's good. It is good. Um, This for me, actually, now that I think about it and we're talking about it, this for me was episode of the week. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And it was one of the best episodes of the season, uh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah, for sure. We got tons of Zoom. Um, Didn't really do much, but we got tons of Zoom. You know, Rupture was a bit of a nothing kind of freak of the week sort of thing. I don't really know why we did that. Who cares? Uh, but Barry going full flashpoint on us. Um, man, that was cool. That was cool. It was sweet. Uh, the rest of it, though, without all of that, um, there were a couple of little parts that, that I didn't really sort of, that didn't really do too much for me. Rupture was one, as I just kind of mentioned. Um, didn't really do a lot. I don't know if that was just to bring Cisco back with his brother. Yeah, is, uh, is that was that it? It's unnecessary. What is, it? Isn't what is it? it? What else is it? Yeah, who knows? Um, and you know, in, in all honesty, between Zoom and Rupture, it was kind of just a battle of who had the most growly voice. <laughs> um, because yeah. you know, I feel like who that's kind of all it was. Yeah, who had the best like voice friggin' modulator? Modulator. Yeah, uh, it was Zoom, by the way. So hands in, down. Yeah, easy. Uh, now in this episode, there's a classic. TV, no, no. Classic TV, no, no. Yes. When Iris professed her love for Barry. Yeah. So you know what happens then? 
Barry he dies. He Barry dies. dead. Yeah, he's dead. Barry dead. Yeah. Uh, we all know Barry's not dead, but it's basically, yeah, you're, you're right. As soon as somebody kind of says, you know, like, I, I guess as soon as somebody is about to do something dangerous and yeah. then someone comes to them and says, I love you. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, no, no. Shut no, up. Please don't. Don't say that. I will die yeah. if you tell me that. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So Iris has finally sort of given in to, to uh, what Barry's been chasing for, for years. Yes. She's finally realized and then Barry just gone. Yes. And, you know, what she says, like, kind of made me wonder. She's wanted Barry this whole time, but she's just been with other guys. See, I disagree. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think that it's kind of, it's more like, okay, well, this happened in Earth, like on Earth 2. And this happened when we saw the newspaper from the future. And, you know, there was this other thing and this other thing. So I guess, you know, it's the universe's way of telling me that I should be with you. Not actually me necessarily wanting to be with you, <laughs> but it's kind of all these things are pointing towards it. So, yeah, I'll give it a go. Mm. Um, you know, but uh, let's hope so. Let's hope they get together. It'd be nice to see what happens. Yeah, definitely. Right. I've got a question for you. Yes. Now. After the accident uh, with Barry, you know, after he, the they did the re the the particle accelerator, yeah. Do you think Barry has become the lightning, aka the speed force, yeah, uh, similar to Crisis on Infinite Earths type of thing? Yes, but yeah. not in the exact way of of Crisis on on Infinite Earths, because I think if I remember correctly, he basically becomes the lightning. Like he goes back in time and he becomes the, the lightning, lightning that, that makes him himself. his powers. Yeah, um, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure from what I've seen from from next week's episode, he does travel back in time. So we see some flash. Maybe it's just flashbacks. I think it's traveling back in yeah. time. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, so yes, mm -hmm. but it's going to be wrapped up very quickly. Okay. Yeah, I think he's stuck in the speed force, and that's why he's seeing these these you know flashbacks yeah. and all that type of stuff so yeah and it, it'll be it'll be an entire battle for the entire episode yes of how he gets out yeah and he will towards the end or he won't um and it'll happen in the next episode <laughs> who knows of course it will um now wally and jesse are they speedsters now everybody thinks yes well i can tell you something apparently tell they're me. not ah Yes. Is it Greg Belanti, the showrunner? It is Greg Belanti. He says, this is the Flash. This is not the Flash in Friends. Yeah. So, there goes that theory. Well, Which so, is fucking disappointing. No Jesse Quick. No. No Kid Flash. Or maybe he's just doing that to fuck with us. Yeah. Maybe it's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they need three speedsters. Um, but I do think, like, obviously when they vanquish Zoom, um, I think Harry and Jesse will go back to Earth 2. Okay. Um, I don't think they'll stick around. There's no point for them to stick around. They actually, yeah. they're vanquished Zoom. They can yeah. go home. Well, here's my theory. They are going to be speedsters. And all three of them are going to combine to beat Zoom. Okay. Mm. What about the man in the Iron Mask? Oh, What's he going to do? Well, he'll Because he's, he's probably a speedster as well. Well, yes. And that probably brings up the next point. Well, maybe there's four of them. Well, yeah. Well, definitely then. Anyway, you're right. It does bring up the next point. Henry Allen, Barry's dad, happens to mention very briefly, just in passing. I was like, oh, my mother's maiden name is Garrick. <laughs> uh, look, guess what you've just done to yourself, pal? You fucking dickhead. You are definitely going to die. Earth yes. 1, Henry Allen is going to die. <laughs> and Earth 2... Henry Allen will be the man in the Iron Mask, and but he'll be like Henry Garrick or... No, he'll be Jay Garrick, but, you know, it'll yeah. be that character, that guy. What's yes. his name? I can't remember his real name. Yes. I, I, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Oh, absolutely. Now. This guy has uh, sealed his fate. Mark my words. Yes. Mark them. <laughs> um, look, I have one gripe with this episode. Okay. Like one major gripe. And it's not this episode. It's just the fact that, you know... We can't forget the fact that we saw, and we mentioned it last week, we saw the Flash cross over with the arrow, albeit briefly, briefly, and use his powers. CW continuity is fucking with my life. Man, it's all those fucking breaks that they do. Yeah. That's what's doing it. Because I, I have no, like, I, I guarantee you that that 
version of Barry Allen running away was probably before any of this happened. Um, but that's, yeah, that's just a good the point. That's just the way the continuity is. Surely they wouldn't like have yeah. it and spoil the whole thing, but maybe they already had it pre-planned and they didn't know what else to do with it. So, you know, it's the same with the Tachyon device when we saw him in Supergirl. Yeah. You know, it's this thing. It just shits me to tears, Yeah, actually, that was really bad, the Tachyon device in Supergirl. Can can we not just, you know, get your shit right? You know, especially in in that episode where he has it, they make it smaller and put it in the fucking logo. Right? It's like, fuck's sake. (laughs) Like, why didn't you just do that so you didn't wreck it? Right. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't want to. I don't want to carry on about it. But the fact is, um, that stuff makes me angry. Um, I've got a best scene though. Yeah, has to be uh, Barry getting his face peeled off by the particle accelerator. Easy, easy. I thought that was pretty cool, and it was very well done. Um, and you know, as we've spoken about the Flash before, they have these moments where their CGI is shitty. Oh fucking! Uh, oh. This was actually really well done. Yeah, it was. It was really good. Uh, rating? Uh four point five. Four point five. Yeah, me too. Oh, equal equals. Um, but I, I do. I'm going to give it four point five out of five. Damn, because that's what it's out of. Yeah, uh, look, it was a great episode. Could have done without rupture. Yeah, um, you know, I don't think it was really necessary. Not at all. Uh, but let's see where the thing is headed. Uh, shit just got real exciting there. Let me tell you. And the Flash returns next week. With the Kevin Smith directed episode, The Runaway Dinosaur. It's what I've been waiting for the entire fucking season. It's here, finally. And we've been saying, is it next week? Is it next week? Well, well guess, guess what? what? It is. Yes, it is. Damn. <laughs> that takes us to uh, Arrow Genesis. Yes. Yes. Damien Dark plans for a new world. Uh, plans for a new world are revealed. Yeah. Oliver goes all oh, Chris Angel and becomes magic. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was terrible. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> and uh, Diggle and Andy square off. In the uh, brother fight of the year. Brother fight of the year. Round one. Ding, ding. First off, two weeks in a row, no flashbacks. Oh, man. No flashbacks. (laughs) Uh, They must be listening to this show. They must be listening to us in particular, (laughs) not the millions of people worldwide that are also screaming for no flashbacks. I, I like to think we have a little bit of influence on the CW? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm All sure. the way from down under. I am so sure we do. <laughs> um, look, but it's good. I don't think we need it. Let's just stop it and move on with it. Um, but Dark has his powers back. That's fine. I'm happy with that. He's a much better He's a much better villain when he does have his powers. Just gets the shit kicked out of him when he doesn't. Um, but now what we've got is Oliver having to visit an immortal shaman to get power too. No, thank you, sir. Yes. No, thank you. Just bring back John Constantine. Right? Because he references him as yes. it's like, so, oh, John, I finally got on to John Constantine and, you know, he told me to go see this person. Why the fuck can't you just go and see John Constantine, man? Uh, bring this guy back to the show. Yes. What is happening? Do you, think it's a, do you think it's a case of like, is the actor, what's his name, Matt Ryan? Is he like, is he too busy? No, I think he's actually... Filming another TV series at the moment. Oh, do you know what it is? Because I'd watch that. Uh, no, I can't tell you. However, that doesn't bode well for any future seasons of Constantine, does it? Well, yeah. It's not that they couldn't do it. And there is still talk that, um, that you know, he may be one of the two characters that they've um, announced to be on the next season of Legends Fuck, of Tomorrow. I hope so. So do I. That would be um, amazing. Or, if not that... Um, there is talk that he could be the person that um, that uh, Oliver goes to in the finale to um, to to help vanquish Damien Dark. That would be really cool. Like that a yeah, like really an Arrow Constantine team up, team up finale. Oh, imagine if he puts on Doctor Fate's helmet. That would that would kind of undo all the shit that this show has built up this season so far. Yeah, don't you think? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, however, speaking of Damien Dark, um, I am, you know, look, uh, he's not much of an amazing villain in any sense of the imagination. I think the show has had better villains. I think all the other shows have had better villains. Um, but I do really get into the way that he is played by Neil McDonough. Yeah. McDonough. Yeah. I think he loves it. He does. It's almost like girlish glee like every week yeah he's like, yeah that's a great way to put it he just really he, gets into it he's got that whole glee feel about it he's mm. just like oh huh, you're gonna die <laughs> yeah yeah basically um you know really like hams it up 
um, which I think is good. And that plays well into Malcolm Merlin, um, well, John Barrowman's Mel- Malcolm Merlin. Yes. They're kind of like back and forth off each other pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty well. It's, and, you know, he's, um, he's a Broadway actor too. Yeah. So, ham it up. Ham it up, guys. Um, it is possibly like one of the, one of the, the few saving graces um, on the show at the moment insofar as the characters. It's kind of like he comes in, doesn't really have a lot to do, but just the way he acts and, and what he says and all that sort of stuff, it's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing, Mr. McDonough. That's it. Hey, um, I've got to give it up for Diggle this week. Mr. Diggle. Yeah. This my is, boy. Yeah, this is his best episode with him in it for a while. Yeah. And we finally see him shutting that fucking Andy kid up. Yeah, shut up, Andy. You yeah, dead. Man. You dead now. <laughs> but, man, <laughs> I was watching this. And my girlfriend was like, is he riding with a baby on his back while people are shooting at him? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I saw it too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, you could, cr- you, you could try to justify it by saying that he wouldn't have had a lot of time to, to really prepare for what was happening. It's just grab the baby, jump on a bike, let's go, let's escape. Um, but yeah, put the baby on the front, man. Yeah, backpacks work both ways, mate. Exactly. Uh, it can be a front pack. <laughs> you know there are plenty of like you know i mean i don't want to get into like baby safety and all that sort of stuff but you know if you've got people shooting at you man don't put yeah. your baby on your back you crazy anyway you crazy jesus what did you think about the thea subplot oh man i thought that was shit yeah yeah i think it was only put in there to show us the underground city yeah and that's it okay yeah and the fact that she figured it out straight away you know, it didn't take her long, but no. she's pretty cluey. Well, she is. You know, she has been trained by Merlin. She has and Oliver and Oliver. Um, do you think her boyfriend Alex is in on it, or do you think he's just like you know he's probably just mind controlled, right? I think he's cooked out of his head. Yeah, you know, cooked on friggin' hive. No, what is it? What are they called? Super soldier pills. Yeah, I don't know what they're yeah. called. But yeah, I know what you. Oh no, uh, multivitamins or multivitamins. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Watch out, they might turn you into an inhuman. You never know. That's fish oil, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I. I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't think we needed it. No. Nah. There could have been another way that they showed us the thing, but it might be interesting because I think that's where we head next episode. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, I don't necessarily think Thea is the character that you need to to start to revolve the show around. Oh, yeah. um, also, have they just completely dropped the whole? She's immune to Damien Dark's power thing. Has Seems that ju- like has it. that just dis- like uh, disappeared by the wayside? Yeah, apparently uh, so. Now, wouldn't you have her trying to kill him? Correct. Like really? now, now I don't actually know. Did she ever tell Oliver that she was immune? Ah. Uh. I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. Because I don't know if she did. I can't remember. Um, But if she has, and at no point have they kind of gone, oh, well, okay, well, you know, she's immune to his power, so let's kind of, like, send her then. Uh, You guys are crazy, man. What are you doing? Yeah, sort that shit out. Um, Got a best scene? I do. And in an episode of, you know, that was pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I did like it. There wasn't a lot of really fantastic scenes for me in this. Um, You know, I think it was... Good to finally see Felicity and Oliver together, but not trying to talk about their relationship because they do have a pretty good back and forth. Yeah. Um, so that you know that was good as much as we don't want to see Elicity anymore. Yeah. Um, but it was good to have those two sort of interact off each other. Look, I'll I'll give it to Thea um, for you know basically figuring out the whole thing very quickly and running running around through the streets of the Dome Town, realizing she's doomed. Really? Or is it domed? Don't, hey, under hey. the dome. Hey, um, so you're going to say that's your best scene and not the scene where Diggle and his brother are like at ends and Diggle has to take care of business? No. Damn. Nah. Fuck you. Because I was kind of, well, I was kind of hoping that, you know, that, that Diggle would be more like, you know, it, it kind of looked like he did it as an accident. No way, man. Yeah. It could, like Andy kind of went for his gun or something and then Diggle's just like, oh. And then he shot him. I would have been more excited if Diggle had just had to make the choice yeah. to put him down there or, you know, or, or risk having him run out in the world. Not mm. sort of have it like, oh, he's kind of coming at me, bang. Huh. You know, it's just like, all right, he's there and it's time to just go execute. Fair enough. You want a little, fun, you want a little fun fact before we move on? Yeah. That's his brother in real life. No way. Yeah, way. Is it? Yeah, it is. Are you serious? Yeah, for, for real. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. Hmm. 
All right. What do you rate it? Uh, I'm going to give it three and a half out of five dead diggles. <laughs> right? Well, it's not too soon, is it? <laughs> not too soon at all. Three and a half out of five dead diggles. Uh, for me, it was another good episode. Had some good moments. I just wonder if the show's left it a little bit too late yeah, to what, make their final run. What episode number was that? Uh, I don't know, but I think there's only three left until the finale. Oh, fuck. So. Well, no, there's one left and then there's... No, there's, sorry, there is. There's two episodes left and then the finale. Yeah, right. So there's there only three episodes left. Um, and I don't, you know, I, I feel like they've kind of left it too long. Yep. What about you? Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, three and a half. Pretty good. You're just copying me this week. Nah, man. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> three and a half. Yeah. Uh, that takes us to Legends of Tomorrow, River of Time. River of Time. So Savage kind of Hannibal lectures his way out of an inescapable cell with non-stop talking. Jax is sent back to 2016 and Rip presents Savage to the Time Masters with dire consequences. Um, look, I want to preface this whole thing by saying that even though there was a shit ton of talking, um, not a whole heap of action until the end and an absolutely uncharacteristically stupid move from Ray. I actually thought this episode was pretty good. This episode was good until he did that. Like, yeah. What the f- Ray, fuck, Ray, man. Ray Palmer is not an idiot. No, he's not. By he's any stretch genius. of the imagination. <laughs> um, and I would, I would, you know, out of all the things that have happened and, you know, his wife dying and the, the decisions that he's had to make, yeah, I, I wouldn't really kind of expect him to make such a stupid move like that. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Um. But otherwise, the show was all right. It was okay. It was all right. Yeah. Um, look, I think one thing about this is Casper Crump's Vandal Savage probably finally had some of his best moments. Um, I, I don't really know why why you'd bother at all with his capture if you're just going to release him in the next episode w- with just a whole bunch of kind of talking in between. Like, was it was there really that much point? Yeah. Um, it turns out. The dude is a time traveler. Yeah, that actually, that was a pretty good twist. That was a pretty good twist. Yeah, and, you know, it actually makes sense why they can't find him in time because he's only in these places. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is one thing the writers got right. However, probably should have just killed him, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm with um, Team Snart, Rory, and Lance on this one. Kill the dude and move on, for fuck's sake. Just kill the dude, man. Yeah. Just get rid of him. But it's too late anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, we can talk in hindsight, but it's too late. Freaking Rip handed him over to the Time Masters, and it's done. Uh, Why? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why. Look, I I will tell you that I literally, and I mean literally yelled, kill the motherfucker uh, (laughs) at the TV when um, Kendra finally sort of like knocked him out or whatever she did um, after he had killed Carter, not killed Carter, but like uh, he had injured Carter, injured him, stabbed him, stabbed him. Yeah. Um, and so she knocks him out or whatever. And I'm just like, kill the motherfucker. Yeah. But she never did. God damn it. Kendra. What is the point now? Carter's back. He's just proven that he's back. Kill him. Yeah. I don't condone violence that often, except on this show all the time, but just kill the dude or kill yourself. <laughs> Something, yeah. you know, get, whatever. Just get off the show, bitch. Um, yeah. Look, um, the the Jack and Stein subplot was a little bit off for me. Jack? And, oh, yeah. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> what did oh, I say? Jack? <laughs> anyway, um, and, I, and I wasn't too sure where they were going with it. You know, Stein needs him to stay alive. Otherwise, he's going to f- have a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's that much to worry about. Um I, I honestly believe that, you know, Jax will come back, you know, at the end of the show. He'll oh, be yeah. like, oh, he'll yeah. come of back. Of course he will. Not, not that he's not going to come back, but I mean, he'll come back and he'll be instrumental into defeating Savage or whatever it is that they do in the end, which is like only a couple of weeks away. So they really need to kind of like pick this up. Yeah. Um, but I think he'll be instrumental in that. I don't think he'll be gone for too long, um, but we might see that. We might see some of the side effects of him sending Jax back or Jack if that's what you want to call him. Um, sending Jax back in time. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Mm. Um, look, and after this, I promise you, I will never mention this this again. But this, so this shit me off. And it's lucky that it didn't get my dick move of the week, let me tell you. But Kendra has basically been fighting now for so long to escape her romantic destiny and, and kind of say, you know, I don't care about Carter. You know, I want to be with Ray. 
you know, fuck destiny, fuck all that sort of stuff. I'm going to make this work. Carter comes back. He's back 10 minutes and it's like, see you later, Ray. I'm back with Carter and fuck you, man. <laughs> what the fuck? I agree. Stop your shit. <laughs> oh, man. It was, it's fucked. It basically, that whole storyline between Kendra and Ray is now completely unnecessary. Unnecessary. Right? And everyone knows how much it fucking made us angry. They have dragged us through the mud with this shit. Oh, only to just drop it like, you know, like it's hot. Yeah, but it ain't hot. It ain't. It's shit. It's shit. They dropped it like it's hot shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, look, let's move on. I could go on about yeah. that phase. You, know, you know what, man? I'm actually going to tweet the uh, the Legends writing room. Ooh, because they're going to listen. They, Hey, man, they're, they're on a retweeting <laughs> spree the other day. So I'm going to do that because that's just fucking shit. All right, man. Take it easy on nah, them, though. Take nah. it easy on them. All right, right, they got right. a new show. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll move on. I'll move okay. on. Uh, so it looks like the uh, Time Masters are in cahoots with Savage. Yep. Don't know their end game, but everything's turning up Millhouse <laughs> <laughs> for Rip, isn't it? it? It is very much Millhouse for Rip and the and the team. Um, Snart and Sarah have hidden smartly. Yes. Which is good. So they will still play a part. Jax will come back from the past. Um, but let's see what happens. Hmm. Let's see. But it's not looking friggin' good at the moment, is it? No, not at all. Uh, best scene. Best scene for me. Definitely Mick Rory eating sugar-free future snacks. With them half hanging out of his them. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. Uh, are you going to give it a rating? Uh, I'm going to give it two and a half. Okay. Yeah, that... That Ray scene really just dampened this for me. Yeah. And, you know, the whole Ray and Kendra thing actually dampened it for me a bit. <sighs> yeah, it's just like that. Ray and Kendra, yeah, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a three. I'm going to give it a three out of five. Look, the show was starting to build. This kind of helped it lose a little bit of momentum, but I did like the way it ended. Um, look, let's see what the Time Masters have in store. I still say look for Jax to come back and save the day. And Legends returns next week with Destiny. One batch. Two batch. So, with the announcement last week that Netflix had greenlit a standalone Punisher series starring John Bernthal, we, as did just about everybody else, got incredibly excited and uh, did a kind of little dance of joy. Uh, during said dance, we also got to thinking about what we would like to see when the series debuts sometime next year. So, here it is. Five things we want to see when the Punisher series hits Netflix in no particular order, but we are going to use Cade's awesome sexy countdown voice. Number five. Number five is hardcore Punisher level violence and weaponry. What is the one thing you expect to see when reading a Punisher comic? For me, it's graphic violence that borderline assaults the senses, played out with an almost infinite arsenal of military grade weaponry. While kept within the Netflix and Marvel landscape, it may be a little hard for the creators to achieve the comic book level of carnage we're kind of used to, but we would certainly like to see them push the boundaries. The Punisher is basically a human god of war. He lives it, he breathes it, he doesn't take prisoners, and he never leaves behind a good-looking corpse. In fact, most of Frank Castle's victims would most definitely require a closed casket funeral. Look, we aren't asking for exploding heads or table legs through the eye akin to 2008's Punisher Warzone. Just give us violence. Pure, unadulterated violence. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Hmm. Guess what that takes us to? Number four. A backstory. And by this, we don't mean an origin story. I think we definitely got that, for the most part, in Daredevil Season 2. Uh, what we want to see is the Punisher's Frank Castle well within his element, which is war. In the comics, he's a Vietnam vet moulded by the conflict. In the TV series, you know, it's modernised to be an Afghani veteran. Yep. Uh, and hopefully Netflix and Marvel have the opportunity to show us how Frank became the expert battle-hardened killer he is by flashing back to him in, at war in the desert before he took to war in the streets of New York City. Indeed. Mm. Number three. Micro and the Battle Van. 
So as a longtime ally and friend of the Punisher, it's highly likely that we are going to see Micro pop up in the standalone series, and rightly so. He's Frank's go-to guy when it comes to all things tech, he handles the Punisher's finances, hangs out in his battle van, and most importantly, he helps him build his weaponry. His arrival was very much alluded to towards the end of the final episode of Daredevil Season 2 when Frank retrieves a hidden CD with the word micro written on it. However, look, the writers could really run with this however they want and choose not to bring him in at all. As someone who was the Punisher's close friend and eventual bitter rival, spoiler alert, this for me, however, is a character the show needs. That would be good. I think it'd be great. That would be damn good. They've just got to get the casting right. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the biggest thing. Mm. Um, yeah, I think they. I think Punisher Ward Zone actually did... Um, a pretty good job when they cast um, what's his name I don't even know the guy's name <laughs> who was Seinfeld's biggest enemy <laughs> oh the the fat dude yeah oh um nah come on man uh, anyway. it's, it's, it's like right there tweet us <laughs> yeah let us know <laughs> let us know what Seinfeld's biggest enemy was mm. uh, because I can't think of it right now but that guy was in Punisher Warzone and it was great. Oh. He, did, he did a really good job. That's cool. I think that's... they cast him fairly well. Is that the same guy that was in Jurassic Park? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That I, guy. Yeah, I totally know who you're talking about. His name. Of. Yeah. Newman. Newman. Ah. Newman. Newman. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> you bloody Excellent. dickhead. All right, moving on. All right. Number two. Cameos and the expanded Punisher landscape. You know, it's probably a given that someone has already, well, you know, someone that has already established themselves in the Netflix Marvel world will pop up in the pen- Punisher series. But just who is anybody's guess? My my money would be on Karen Page. Considering, yeah. you know, they already had that, the, the relationship was developed. But one thing is for certain, we want these shows to be connected. Having Daredevil pop up would be a great way of continuing the morality issues behind the two. And there's certainly a lot of stories the writers could really pull from. That would be bloody awesome. It'd be awesome. Mm. Uh, Kingpin is another one, but we'll get to that shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing we'd like to see is the Punisher removed from New York City landscape. You know, this is a good opportunity for the show's creators to expand outside the 50-ish blocks of Hell's Kitchen. I don't know how much it is exactly, but yeah. you know, 50 or 60-odd blocks. Yeah. And, you know, bring him to somewhere like, I don't know, how about Down Under? Hey. They did that in the comic, you know. Did they? Yeah. Which comic? Oh, fucking the Punisher comic, mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just bring him down yeah, under. Yeah, fucking went rue hunting. Hey, is that the Punisher? Oh, oh fuck me. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, don't let us be a part of it at all. <laughs> we'll <laughs> we'll <wreck> ruin it. <laughs> uh, and that takes us to number one. Top notch villains. Now, depending on the storyline the creators decide to run with will likely determine the main antagonist, and the Punisher has a fantastic rogues gallery to choose from. Whether it's his greatest adversary, the deformed Jigsaw, the hulking mercenary Barracuda, or similarly giant-sized foe, the Russian, Frank Castle won't be short of violent conflict. And that is exactly what we love about the character. And look, if Daredevil doesn't go that way, we could expect to see more of Vincent D'Onofrio's amazing Kingpin, or even the adamantium-laced psychopathic assassin Bullseye. Whichever way we go, rest assured, we are in for an action-packed good damn time. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it. They're the five things that we want to see in the upcoming Netflix series. Let us know what you think. What do you guys want to see? Anything. Yeah. It can be anything. Yeah, I, you know, I truly believe that John Berthel to be the perfect casting for The Punisher. Uh, yeah, he was great. Um, I I just hope that they give him the the due treatment that he deserves. So, to the show creators, the writers, the directors, everyone involved, I humbly ask you to please give us the Punisher we so truly deserve because it hasn't happened yet on the big screen. Yes, apart from these little cameos. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm on TV shows, you dickhead. No, 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 no. I'm talking... No, Are you talking about the yeah. silver screen? Yeah. Oh, man. I said the big screen, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I didn't connect the dots. Oh, uh, my God. Anyway, that's it. I need a new co-host. Yeah, I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that means it's time for our final segment, Get to Know Your Favorite Hero, brought to you by Kasplat Comics and Collectibles. Immerse yourself in other worlds at kasplatcomics.com.au or you can visit their Facebook page, Kasplat Comics and Collectibles, Check them out. We'll leave a link in our show notes, as we always do. 
So, keeping in the theme of The Punisher, we are going to give you two amazing story arcs that Marvel and Netflix should, and hopefully, will attempt to adapt into their upcoming series. The Punisher has many great storylines, but this early in, these two look to be the fan favorites. Number two. Number two is Up is Down and Black is White, written by Garth Ennis and penciled by Leandro Fernandez. Up is Down, Black and White tells the story of mobster Nikki Cavella, who in a push for power decides to take down the Punisher by doing the unthinkable, digging up the bodies of Castle's deceased family and desecrating them in an attempt to lure him into the open. The carnage and body count that ensues is nothing short of mind-blowing, as Frank Castle goes on a one-man rampage to find and kill Nikki Cavella. While I'm not sure Netflix could necessarily get away with the overall tone of this arc, considering themes include mass murder, incest, and urinating on dead bodies, there are certainly elements that they could run with. Frank Castle taking on a young mobster hungry for, the pow- uh, hungry for power who will stop at nothing to reach the top. Sounds like a fantastic first season to me. Number one. Number one is The Slavers, also written by Garth Ennis and penciled by Leandro Fernandez as part of the Punisher Max series. The Slavers is a gritty, visceral, and depressing look at the world of human sex trafficking as the Punisher finds himself drawn into a war he never saw coming. The tone is dark. Do not expect a happy ending. The violence is brutal, as we've come to expect from the Punisher, but it's the brilliant writing from Garth Ennis that would make The Slavers an amazing small screen adaption. I mean, who wouldn't want to see John Bernthal wage war against a gang of militarized, battle-hardened Eastern European people smugglers against a dark New York City backdrop? Right? 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 Hmm. I want to see that. That'll be damn good. Damn good. Yes. But guess what? What? That's going to bring us to the end of another episode. Oh. Ah. But stay tuned. Next week, we are going to talk AMC's upcoming series, Preacher, and answer the question, just who the hell is Jesse Custer? I don't know. Or do I? Find out next week. <laughs> In the meantime, thank you once again, everyone, for listening, subscribing, reviewing, etc. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook at Comic Confidential Podcast, Instagram and Twitter at Comic Con Pod. Look out for the YouTube channel coming soon. And we've got the website, ComicConPod.com. And if that YouTube channel's not up, you've got to blame Dennis. Blame Dennis. Has- Hashtag hate dennis yes no don't hate that's that's a bit nasty no no no. hashtag blame dennis or dennis is a dickhead Ah, that's a good one yeah hashtag dennis is a dickhead yes do that but we love him for everything that he does for the show here Mm. thanks for listening as always i'm troy and i'm cade and this has been comic confidential cheers peace see i let you do your thing this week thanks man i appreciate that i still hate you